Well, good morning, beautiful family, men and women of God. It's great to be here, and I am most excited about this particular message today. So I pray that you listen all the way through because it's really going to transform everything in your relationship with the Lord. And so I welcome you here. I'm very thankful and glad that you are here today. I will be using the King James, but I do also have my favorite thin line NASB for just in case. I tend to write things down different in each in, in each Bible. However, I'll be using mostly the King James. I just wanted to pull this right to my right to the scripture I'm going to be using because I think I highlighted something here that I will be referring to, I think. But with that said, let's just get started in prayer and get right to it. So Father, today in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this message. I thank you for the revelation. I thank you for freedom in it. And I thank you, Lord, that we have eyes to see and ears to hear and spirits to receive what you reveal to us today. I thank you for these things and I pray every word is yours. I thank you, Father, that, that all distractions are, are removed from us today. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, turn with me to the book of Genesis. And it's going to be in chapter 3. As we dive in to God's word, first we know, now hold it Genesis 3, but I'm going to read this to you as well because this is so important that we really begin to understand this now many of you will will proclaim and decree the Jeremiah 29 11 okay 29 11 but I'm gonna take you to somewhere somewhere um, somewhere else to show you something else and it'll be right in here but it is 29 11 but it reads different in an NIV versus a King James. We know that, but I want to show you this. For I know, this is 2911 Jeremiah, but hold at Genesis 3. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace, saith the Lord. Or saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Now, I'm going to grab it in here because I want to see in the in the um, NIV for I know the plans I have for you. So says the Lord plans of prosperity and so on and so forth. But here for I know the plans that I have for you declares the Lord plans for welfare and not for calamity to give you a future and a hope. Okay. I'm establishing that because that's a very common scripture. Everyone knows that when we like to claim it, God, God's got a great plan for your life. Well, yes, if you don't know it, you need to because if, if God's got something for me and I don't know what it is, then that's on me, okay? But we're establishing that God's thoughts towards us are good. Anything that is not good good thoughts toward you, you have to start to discern, that's not of God. I rebuke that, that's not of God. I know, baby doggy. And so now, let me show you this, Genesis 3, 5. When you see this, you're, gonna, you're, you're just going to get it, okay? For doth for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Notice the and evil, okay? So, but also notice the lie before that in verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye, ye shall not surely die. The moment you believe the lie of the devil and it becomes your own, you die. Your body just follows. 
So this is why you have to really know what you speak, what you think, to whom you speak to, who's in your circle, because people that are not, that can't think, that are negative and chronic negative, anything that you speak, they will, they will crush it and you don't have time. So he says though, I'm going to read this again, because for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof. So in the day, in that day, God knows in that day, then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw hmm, that it was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree was to be desired to make one wise, she did eat of the fruit thereof. Or she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also under her husband with her, and he did eat. Okay. Let's examine what, what the enemy did here. Everything that God has for you is good. Okay? Everything. For I know the ways I, I think toward you, so says the Lord. If God is for you, who can be against you? We could excuse me, go throughout the scripture. God is for you. God, in all of the purity of who God is, created you, okay? God created you in the fullness of who you are. God created you. This is why it's so important when we look when we look at other people, we can't just we can't just bash them or make fun of them or belittle them because that's God's creation. Whether or not they accept God yet is a different thing, but to look and laugh and mock people, bully people, that's just not nice. It's just unkind and we could do better because we're really just diminishing God's creation. So here God created in his purity because everything that God does is pure. Everything, which is why there's such an attack on family, what family is, family values. Never mind that, and I'm going to show you this. I'll just write this down here. Maybe you can see it. It's family, okay? Watch. Okay. Family. Father and mother, I love you. Do we really think that God's playing around when he created man and woman to, to be in the creation of marriage by God to procreate? I know, baby doggy. Do we really believe that? Do we, do, we, do we really see now the attacks of how the enemy works to get us to look beyond everything that God has created for us? So, when we move in a way, we see that the enemy is moving quickly to come and destroy everything. We already know that, okay? Now, before she freaks out, I'm just going to set her up with some of these. Just have a little fun with me, okay? Because I'm setting all this up, and I know it's going to be a long message if I don't just get this all in. <laughs> Treats. <laughs> there we go. That way the chair won't be knocked over. That way the cameras won't fall over. And all the other stuff that comes with puppies. So, here we are, and we see... God's purity of everything that God does is by who he is. God is love. God did not create death. Solomon tells us that death came through envy. Okay. So for God, God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof. So the enemy's already planting that there is a day. Then your eyes shall be open. And ye shall be as gods. Well, doesn't that sound great? So the enemy here is insinuating something. He's insinuating, well, you, you right now aren't a god. And you'll know good and evil, right? That you, you, you'll be as a god knowing good and evil. But he's insinuating that what's over there 
God's withholding from you. See, right now, your, your eyes are closed because you don't know what's over there. So you need to know what's over there. What is God withholding from you? Why doesn't God want you to know good and evil? See, you should know good and evil, which is why there's so many things that are such a danger. The computer is one of the most dangerous things because behind that screen is everything that you really don't need to know. And never mind, and I've shared in some of my messages about, about all, of the, all of the occult signatures that are all over all the devices. Never mind the batteries and the screens, and never mind, never mind when the little thing turns and when you wait for it. You're just waiting to enter into these portals. And all of these things that are all around us that are moving us away because, oh, then ye will know. Ye will know and be as gods. So there must be something that God is withholding from you, right? I mean, that's what the devil's insinuating. So what he's doing is he's bringing not a, not a, not a contradiction of, of ideas between, between God and, and Eve, or even God at that moment, but Eve within herself. Eve within herself. Now, let me show you, go with me to John chapter 14, but hold it, Genesis 3. <laughs> Don't eat the pen, please. John 14, I just dropped a pen, and we have pen parts all over everywhere. But John 14... Watch. Believe in me. Okay, it's John 14. Now look at this, okay. Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, and the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye ask anything of me in my name, it shall, it shall be, it, I will, hold on. Let me start back at 14. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now, we also know in 15.7, if ye abide in me, which goes back to Monday short, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, and ye shall ask of me, it shall be done unto you. So we're coming to abide unto God, knowing that we're not separate from him, but also, and I thought that I had it highlighted in here, it's in 15 that that I that he withholds no good thing from his children. God withholds no good thing. So how is you or Eve knowing evil now a good thing? The enemy is twisting this. Do you see this? The enemy, now, obviously, uh, Genesis was before John. We, we get this, right? I'm not, I'm not discounting that. I'm wanting you to see the goodness of God and how wicked the enemy is. Because here it is that God had everything good. God had everything good because it's all good for his children. If you are a parent, don't you want to protect your children? Don't you want them to be protected? They don't need to know how to, how to twerk. They don't, they don't need to know how to, how to do these things that our schools are teaching in third, fourth, fifth grade. Kids today know things that they should never, ever, ever, ever know. We can see this with the Hollywood elite coming out, how, how groomers they, they really are in these things, moving along just like the devil. God had it here in that day, in, in the day ye eat there, thereof. Then, then, it's the moment that you look, it's the moment that you see, it's the moment that your eyes are open, that you will be as gods, knowing good and evil. God's intent was not for his children to know and to walk in evil. But the enemy is going to contradict everything about God and God's goodness and his goodness toward you. 
See, what God has for you is right here. It's all right here, okay? But the enemy has twisted this that God is withholding, see? God's withholding because what's out there, what's over there, yonder, as they might say in, in the south, over yonder, I don't know how far yonder is, I don't know where yonder is, but it's over there. So what is over there that you don't know is because God is withholding it from you. So you need to go find out and let me help you. Hmm. I'll help you. Because then you'll be, you'll, you'll be as God's. You'll be just like God. And many people today think that they're little gods. Little would be the key word because you're little in mind, you're little in statutes, you're little in spirit. You're just little. You're just a tiny little old person. Maybe not old, but you just are small. Let's just put it that way. In, in the ideology of your thinking to think that you are, are God. Like you didn't, create, you didn't create yourself. Let's be clear here. So because God is withholding, you must take it into your own hands. Independence, anyone? independent we see the song don't need a man don't need this i can do all all la 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 and society prides itself on the separation of god's creation to god and once you see it you will begin to see how easy it was now it wasn't that eve expected that to happen because everything that she was looking at to that point was all good this is why it's so very sly and you have to know you have to know what to see it because there are things that are separate people want to lump all one thing into one thing well evil is evil but you still have to have to speak appropriately to know what what the things are and we still have to be able to see it because if everything is lumped into one thing well then you're not going to see it when you start to see it, then you start to see it. This is why there isn't just one shade of blue for the sky. There's many colors of blue, okay? Just as there's many levels in, of evil and darkness. So here the enemy is trying to get Eve to justify or to walk with him saying, well, oh, huh, maybe you're right. Maybe there is something I don't know that I really need to know. Maybe I need to go investigate it. Look now what happened. The reliance and the safety net that was in the presence of abiding in God, lost, left, left that, gone, completely gone. The moment that you think so highly of yourself, oh, I know how to do that, I'm gonna go out and do that, I'm gonna, uh, I, 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 that's the minute you have placed yourself under your own covering as your own God, and you will fail. You will fail. You just will. Self-worship is, is so prevalent today. And, and many pride themselves on the independence. Well, what do I need God for? We don't have that kind of time. I don't have the battery life for that, but we surely could get there if we ever needed to. We surely could get there. Why don't you need a savior? Look, look, at, look, look at where you would be going without one. So Eve has this conversation, which is why you really got to know to whom you're speaking to. How often are you in a conversation and you tell someone your hopes or your dreams and they kind of laugh or they kind of look at you like, and if you're a believer and you got those little, those little uh, jealous Janices in the, in the, in the, in the house that, Oh, and she thinks she's going to do that for God. Look at her. You think God's going to do anything in her life. Look at her. She's homeless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look what God's doing in my life. Yeah, why don't take a real good look. Take a real good look. Most unassuming, you would know it, but God is doing mighty, mighty, mighty things. So you have to be very careful. Don't think that it's just in the world, because I will tell you that the people in the world have been happier for me than anybody, most that I've ever met in the church funny how that works you have to discern that I'm not coming against anybody I'm saying you have to be aware to whom you share 
anything with. Speak silently and build your army. Or say, stay silent and build your army. Build in secret. In your secret, in the secret place with him. Dwelling, abiding in him. Because anything that you share, those people that would be listening, are they listening for them or are they listening for you? If they're listening for you, they'll encourage you. If they're listening for themselves, you will know. And as you start to discern that, I taught on that in the in the last in the, the last I might say the wall series, but but in the series about the narrow path, you'll you'll start to see who your frenemies are. And the enemy of my enemy is not my friend. Many people say that. That's a, that's a lie. The enemy of my enemy is my enemy. My enemies are my enemies. Anybody that's not going on the side with, with God is, a, is an enemy in accordance with God. You're either at enmity with God or you're not. So the enemy, look what he did. He got Eve to become an enemy of God. And it's that easy. All it takes is a thought. This is why you have to remain ingrained and engrossed in the word because the devil is a liar. And the minute that you think something outside of God's thoughts and God's ways, you're toast because it's easy to compromise. Oh, that won't happen. Really? Many people start to question, how is it that we have so many pastors that are stepping down? And there's been two more in another, uh, actually two more in Dallas and, and another one that, that, that stepped down. And people are questioning, well, they're no different than anybody else. They have more struggles because of, of the position, so they need more, more care in, in, in prayer. However, um, the moment that you look at them and think that, that well, they're so this or that's the moment that it can start happening to you. If it happened to Eve, and Eve's deceived, and King Saul's deceived, don't think that you cannot be deceived. You're just deceived if you think you can't be. That's just, that's just what Paul tells us, and we see it throughout the Word. So the enemy has Eve now investigating what's outside the scope of jurisdiction. Outside of abiding in the presence of God. She had everything she needed there. In the presence of God is everything that you need. Many of you are trying to escape. You're trying to go. Where are you going? Where, where are you going? And I remember telling, telling one of my mentors, I said, you know, I, I can't get out without God. And he says, why would you want to? I'm like, I'm not. I don't. I'm not trying to. But God has to get me out of here. Correct. Right. But I can't get out without God. Well, why would you want to? I, I'm not. I don't want to get out without God. Where are you trying to go? I'm just trying to go where God, where God wants me to be. Well, if you're in the presence of God, then you're where you need to be. We kind of came a little circular in, in that. But many of you were thinking you need to go rush out. You need to go out. You need to go. Where are you going? One, you don't know where you're going. You're trying to leave where you should not be leaving. And what you need right now is right where you are. And until you settle in that, you will be conflicted, seeking, just like Eve, what's out there that is not for you. And it will be to your demise. Why? Because, one, you'd be leaving right where you're supposed to be. That's a big problem. And two, when you leave where you are that is, that is right where God would have you to be, and you start going for your own self, oh, you're toast. You are toast. You're, you're just absolutely toast. Now, here's the funny thing about that. The wise get that. The foolish think that it's foolery, which, of course, they would. Okay? They're just going to think, well, you're just so weak. You need to rely on God for everything. You're damn right I do. You are damn right I do. Yes, or dang right for some of you. But yes, I rely on him for everything because Paul also said that. And why would I not? That doesn't even make sense as a believer. The minute that I think that I don't need him is the minute I should just walk, just file for divorce. It's so ignorant. It is so absolutely ignorant because you were saying, I don't need you, God. I'm good on my own in all my godness. Look at me in who I am, that I'm so smart and I'm so... The wise rest and abide in him. Why? Because they came. Because you cannot come near or you cannot abide until you come. Okay? So Eve was there. She was there. 
She was there. She had everything. Many of you have everything where you are. And you're looking for the bright lights and the cityscape and all the stuff. You're looking outside your marriage to fulfill you. What you have is right there. The grass may be greener on the other side, but you still got to mow it. If it's even grass, you don't even know. What you have right in the presence of God is what you need. Stop trying to escape. Eve didn't know what she was doing. There was no, there was no warning for Eve and Adam will set him aside. So she was left to her own devices. And it came, became her demise. So God withholds no good thing. So what is it that you actually are seeking out there? What happens when you start venturing out to places you need not be is when you start falling apart. Because there's nothing, there's nothing outside of God. Now, many of you will argue, yeah, but wherever I go, God's presence is. But if you are the one that's dragging God along, instead of you abiding in Him, you got it backwards. And yes, when you're watching porn, God's presence is there. Or Jesus, you're just watching it with Him, just, just to let you know that. Some of you are aware that, uh, yeah, whatever you're doing, Jesus is there right? But that's, that's not this particular example here. This is why would you ever try to leave from the presence of God? Trying to go, where, where are you going? Eve did not know, even though the enemy said, and he positioned it in a way, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. What is it out there that is what you need to know anyway? What is out there that is going to benefit you and help your life? Many of you have gone down these rabbit holes that have done nothing but distract your entire life from knowing God. You know every single thing about every single thing except the Word of God. Okay, and how's it helping you? You're miserable, restless, trying to go to the next place. You don't even know where you are to know where you're going. Eve didn't know where she was. She just thought that what she would get there would be better. But you know what? She ended up naked in the worst way. So the lie here is that God and his best isn't for you. God has his best. Now let me tell you this. God's best is God himself. God's best is Him. So, if you're trying to get out to go, well then what are you seeking? You're seeking everything outside of God, which is exactly what Adam and Eve, or Eve, did. Sought outside of God. So many of you are looking out, looking into the material to fill you, looking at comfort, whether it's food, or relationships you should never pay for comfort should never pay for none of that stuff but many people seek outside and then what happens is that it creates a further divide with God well God uh-uh mm -mm. if you leave that covering of God which he Christ is your covering okay so I'm going to dispel some of that religiosity that that I run into quite often here first things they ask what car do you drive what church do you go to and who's your covering well I don't drive I have a driver and uh, I follow Jesus and not church he's my covering how about that <laughs> that rattled the religious when I first moved here it was what it was so where are you going Everything that you would be seeking that is outside of God is separate from Him. That's exactly what Eve did. 
exactly what the enemy wanted her to do. He knew the purity of God. So what did he do? He can't destroy God. He can't become God. AI never will be God. We know that they're trying to position themselves to be that. But if he can't be, then let me destroy your idea of God, get you to think that he's withholding. So then you can just come along with me. So you don't actually have to leave God. You can still stay with God, but you can just follow this plan that I'm going to give you. Because, you know, God's just been withholding from you for too long. I know that you've been waiting for God for a spouse but so long. But you know what? God, or for so long, and God hasn't done anything. Let me just show you the way and how to do it. It's okay. You'll fare much better. Instead of getting yourself cleaned up right with God and prepared for His best, now you just take matters into your own hands. And then what happens? One, when it doesn't work, you come back to God mad and blame God or you get an STD, or you get a baby, or you get dumped, or you get ghosted, or you get all the things, but broken would be what comes out of that. Adam and Eve became broken because they sought outside the Lord. When you start seeking outside the Lord, the lie becomes the truth. The lie becomes truth the truth, that you need all of this stuff. Well, I need this to be happy. No, you don't. It's a lie. Because the minute you got to maintain it, clean it, take care of it, do anything with it, you're going to complain about it and then be mad at God that you got one more thing you didn't need in the first place. It's the nature of people. And the enemy will capitalize on you looking out to what you don't have to make what you don't have be something that you must need. But let me tell you what it does. Turn with me to the book. Hold still at Genesis 3, but go with me to James. It's such a lie and it's such a fallacy and it is so destructive. It is so destructive when we seek outside of God. The book of James. Oops. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Adam and Eve, knowing good and evil, became unstable. They were double-minded. They were single-minded on Christ or in God. Well, let me clarify. In God, in the garden, in him, in every single thing. And then they went out to, to investigate. They went out, became double-minded. And we can see the whole lineage. Look at the kids. Look what happened. Now, if we go into, I think it's also, look at this. In verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Okay, so that's one command. Resist the devils, the second one, and he will flee is the outcome of your submission. So, here's, here's the problem with this now. Submit yourselves. Well, now we see that the curse of unsubmission <laughs> or resenting submission is what occurred by Eve's refusal to stay submitted. She was submitted. She just did not resist the devil. He would have fleed if, or flew, <laughs> if she would have resisted him. But she entertained him. And she sought what he had to offer her. Quite different from Christ. Very, very different because the devil came to Jesus after the 40 days when he was tired and hungry and then tried to, tried to sales pitch him and Jesus wasn't having it. And even Jesus cited the scripture. So the enemies lie here. Look at this. For God doth know, God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof that your eyes shall be open. So God will know when you eat and your eyes will be open. That's the result of you eating and what you will know. You will become this. So the more you know, think about what it does to you. The more you know, the more you know. And they always have the little thing on the, on the news channel of the more you know, right? The more you know. It should be the, the, the more, uh, the, the who you know. Not the more you know, the who you know. Because there's the protection in the who you know knowing good and evil. 
So the sales pitch is right here. She's ripe and set up for it. So what she doesn't know, check this out. So Eve didn't know what she didn't know. Now, now, what you don't know that you don't know is far greater than what you do know and what you think you know. It's funny when people come into the revelation of something, I'm like, well, where you been? <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> I've been praying about this for like the last decade. Hello. Welcome. Because this was stuff that we studied in warfare going back 20, 22 years. So now people are starting to, 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 to wake up and come to this place. But what you don't know that you don't know. So you, you may not know some stuff. Well, I'm aware that I don't know how to change the transmission in a vehicle. I'm aware of that. What I don't know that I don't know is so much greater, but that does not mean that I need to go and investigate what I don't know that I don't know. And here's what the enemy did. He made that what you don't know that you don't know, because now you will know good and evil. So not only will you know good, which now the idea of good is totally distorted, which is why you've heard me say over the course of time that we really don't know what good is because good has been so distorted. We think good is when God gives us what we want. Well, <laughs> no. And we don't even know God's good thoughts because we're so far away because so many have been deceived by this prosperity operation and prosperity is not a money thing but when you get that then you get that and you'll see far beyond just dollars and lack of sense so so in this realm the enemy comes in and and capitalized on what eve didn't know she knew nothing about evil why would she need to why, why, why did she need to? She was in the best place she could be. You, dear brethren, beloved, are in the best place that you could be. Why are you going and searching and seeking all the things that you need not even to be fussing about? You're consuming your stuff, your, your life, or your life is being consumed by all of this garbage. All of the garbage. You enter into a church and the churches are more political than they are about Christ. I don't give a rip who you voted for. I care about where you're going when you die. The God will fix the rest. You get with Jesus, everything changes. But you get with the politician, everything changes. <laughs> See the difference of the change. So here, what she doesn't know becomes the God. What you don't know becomes the God. So the enemy dangles the invisible carrot. Just dangles that invisible carrot. It becomes the idol. What you don't have becomes the idol. When I get that, I will. No, you won't. You will just be as bitchy as you are now. Sorry. But you know it's true. Don't you? I'll be happy. No, you won't. Because you're looking outside of God for that and you're idolizing what you don't have in, in this XYZ realm. Okay, I can position it in a question. What are you, what is it that you're after? What, what is it? Eve did not know she needed to be after anything. She did not know she needed to be after anything. She wasn't. She was in the perfect place. It literally in the perfect place, in the perfect place, dwelling, abiding in God, in the fullness of all things beautiful, everything. She had everything, but the everything from God was not good enough for her. And as a result, she lost it all. If you're married, really take hold of this because you have everything right there in that. Don't mess it up looking at what's out there. Oh, that's a 2.0 model. Yeah, with more problems and it's going to break down more so than what you already have. You know how to fix what you already have. You go look at that, you're going to get more problems. And it comes more computerized and more fake. You don't even know what it is. Mm -mm, stick with what you've got. Stick and stay in the presence of the Lord. So that dangling carrot, that dangling carrot now is the idol that she's got to get. 
Isn't it Victoria's Secret that you just got to have it? As they flop themselves all around, right? You just got to have it. Eve just had to have it. And oh, she got it. And she shared it. And lost everything. So not only, not only that, check this out. Not only was what she didn't have that she didn't know that she didn't have, that became the idol. So she separated herself from God to go get it. We see it so clearly today. I mean, we, we see it so clearly today. But here's the, greater, here's the greater thing of what happened. Not only did she separate herself from herself, she separated herself from God. And look at what is occurring today. We see so many broken women that went and they saw it. And they, they are now seeing, and they're so hard, and they're cold, and callous. And it's because this world is a harsh, harsh world. And the women are in need of love to be brought back in. But try telling them, and then you'll, you'll find, you really better just sit down on that one. But you see, the more that we venture out, and women know how to get stuff done. We all know that. You can raise up an army, and they can watch wearing their hats and all kinds of stuff. But women, the mama bears, women know how to get stuff done. Moms know how to get stuff done. Not what, not what I'm saying here. But with that separation, now guess what happens? When there is a separation from Eve to Eve and Eve to God, now we got to come back, which is why we need Jesus. But many women today are so broken that they're not going to come to Jesus because he's a man and look what men do. This is why we got to care and love God's daughters and not bash them. Oh, she just dressing like a whore. Yeah. She's not doing it for the reasons you think. And it never garners what she's really desiring. What she's really desiring is love. And going to Dubai for a bag is not gonna bring it forth. So Eve separated herself. The enemy created that wedge to defragment Eve within Eve, as well as Eve to God. And then look at what happened. Her and Adam are now unequally yoked until he followed along. Now, look at Amos 3.3. 3. How, can, how can two walk together if they are not in agreement? Well, Eve couldn't walk with Adam because now they're out of agreement. But look, and so Eve, Adam followed along, but look what happened. Who did they come in agreement with? They came in agreement with the enemy. They already were in agreement. They already had agreement. You were in a place where you already have agreement with God. Where are you going? The minute that you try to escape, well, you know, my life isn't this, and I got to do this, and da, 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 and I'll be happy here, and I need this, and I need that, and all the la, la, la. No, you don't. Because Paul tells us, I learned the secret to be content with much and content with little. What are you seeking outside of Christ that's going to give you contentment? Nothing will. It doesn't matter what crap you have. How many houses? It's all crap. Okay, great. You buy a house. Okay, then what? You got to fill it. Okay, then what? Then what? Great. Look at what you've accomplished. Meaningless, meaningless, Solomon says. So, we begin to see here, Amos, how can you walk together if you're not in agreement? Adam and Eve and God were all in agreement. They exchanged their agreement for the lie and agreed to it. They established themselves in a new covenant. They established themselves in a covenant of lie with the devil, and he became their new God. It's very, very sad because people are searching and seeking in all things. And in all of those things, it is really God that you're seeking. There is nothing outside of Him. It doesn't matter. And many, many of you are struggling with finding your place. Your place is in the presence of the Lord, period, end of story. 
What's it supposed to look like? It's supposed to look like Christ. And when I say that, people laugh, but it's supposed to look like Christ. Period. Well, I'm... Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Everyone's moving and striving and seeking, and I got the hustle, and, and all of that is providing no rest. You will never have any pure... God-filled rest if you do not abide and if you are trying to escape the presence of God to go get yours you will never rest you will never come near you will never abide because the enemy will make certain of it he will make certain of it and if you are not already praying because you don't have time that tells you what God you've aligned with and it is not God I can tell you that oh why do you spend so much time praying let's just go that doesn't work like that. You go on ahead because I am not going to leave before. I'm not leaving, period. But I'm not going out before there is a release by him. Why would I want to leave him? And that's where when you get this, when you are in that place, and let me paint it for you in, in the... Uh, the natural, okay? So you can be in the most beautiful place with the wrong person and it can be miserable. <laughs> I've had that experience a few, a few times in a few places and it's like, wow. <sighs> well, if you weren't here talking, it'd be great. <laughs> yeah, but on the flip side, you can be in the middle of nowhere with the right person and everything is right and you never want that moment to end because there's nothing else that you need it's all right there that is abiding and dwelling in the lord what do i need to go out and go do well i gotta do this and i gotta do this and i gotta do this okay martha it will get done. Eve, well, there's so much that the enemy wants to destroy in the purity of God, to get us to think that if God isn't giving me what I want, and this is a, this is a, a current modern day mammon ideology, that God just wants you happy. Happiness comes through obedience and contentment and abiding in Him, period. Anything outside will, will not bring that forth. Number two is, is that we got to go and get ours. Until, until you come to that full place that everything you need, you have in Him, you will never get to that full place of really living an abundant life. Because the abundant life isn't about the external, it's the internal. And the enemy wants you to not know that. The enemy wants you to know and to think that you've got to keep going and going and going and going and going. And every step is further and further and further away from God because there's more to know and more to know and more to know. And you will get tired and away from the Lord. It's exactly the plot that the enemy has set up. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians and then I'm out. 2 Corinthians 11. I've got this highlighted. i got to remember what the scripture is. 2 Corinthians 11.3. But I'm going to show you. I know it's okay. It's okay. It's okay, truffles. Yeah. 11.2 of 2 Corinthians. Look at this. For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So I am a jealous God for you. You aren't invisible to God. And for many of you, you're just trying to get to instead of just resting and looking up. And the moment that you sit yourself there and you purpose that let me tell you nothing else matters nothing nothing else matters and it's the most glorious place 
that you could be. And if you don't get there, you will be fighting over stupid, worldly, carnal things. Chasing the invisible carrot that the enemy dangles. And it doesn't ever end. But here's verse 3. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtly. It's so very sly and so very subtle that you don't really know it. How, how, do you, how do you waste a year? Many people say, I don't know where the year went. Why? Where did time go? Why don't you know? It goes by quick. Yes, what are you doing with it? How do you waste a year? You waste a month. How do you waste a month? You waste a week. How do you waste a week? You waste a day. How do you waste a day? You waste an hour. How do you waste an hour? You waste a minute. How do you waste a minute? You waste a moment by letting in anything that is not of God to become your thought. We think on the pure things. So it's that very subtle. How do you gain a pound? Uh, easy. How do you lose a pound? Just as easy. Awareness. When you become aware of what you're eating and what you're doing, then all things change. Eve was not aware. Eve was not aware. First Peter 3 tells us to be sober, to be vigilant. I think it's 3, it might be 5, 5, 8. First Peter 5, 8. Be vigilant, be sober, be alert. The, the enemy is there prowling. He's all around. He was all around looking whom he may devour. Adam and Eve became separate. They, be, they became agents of the enemy in that exact moment by a subtle enemy that knew more about how to deceive. See, a deceiver knows how to deceive. It's exactly what the enemy is. And if you are not aware of how it happens, you need to wake up. Can't happen to me. Well, then you're already deceived. But he continues on here. Through his subtly, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. The simplicity that they had in God was so beautiful, so pure. Everything, everything that anybody could ever want. And the enemy corrupted all of it. And now... Look at this. The minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. We tend to overcomplicate everything. Well, I need, I know you don't. You need to sit yourself still before God and you need to show up as you are. Well, I need this, I need this. Go watch, if you're going to watch a worldly movie, watch Pure Country, George Strait. And what they try to do. You need this and this and this and this and this. Now, I just need, I just, I just need a microphone. The simplicity of it. We're headed into these times now where things are going to become very simple. Simple is really simple when you just live in it as who you are. You don't need to copy anybody. You don't need to imitate. You need to be the original that you are. You need to be aware and you need to be alert and you need to think on the greater things of God. This world will tell you that you need to keep doing and going and have and it's a lie. It is an absolute lie. It's an absolute lie. And Eve fell for the lie and partnered with the liar to the downfall of all of us. You got to break that off. You got to destroy that. You got to wake up and see where the enemy's coming in. And finally, what you want to do is you want to talk to God about all the ways that you've been seeking outside of God more than you've been seeking Him. If you've been seeking beyond God, there's a reason, and, it's, and you'll never be fulfilled with it. You need to be looking to God and, and Christ for all things. You need to stop chasing all these false prophets and paying them. They make two to four hundred million a year off of lying to people. It's an abomination. You need to seek God. You need to hear His voice. You don't need to go chase the people. You need to follow me as I follow Christ. Those people aren't following Christ. They're liars. They're scumbags. They're the scum of the earth. And, and, and I say that with all boldness. Absolute scum. Because they're using Jesus to make a profit. You need to remove everything and get before God and repent for any ways 
that you have sought the create the, the 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 creation more than the creator out of Romans 8 1 because you need to know him and you need to get your family in check and you need to get out every deception everything that you believe in you need to have in your home, you need to have everything locked down to any avenue of any enemy that is trying to enter in. You need to get your kids in order and put them before God. And they need to know God. They need to know Jesus Christ. There is nothing more important than in these times. People are running to and fro and freaking out. Care not. You got to be standing still see these deceptions of how the enemy works very subtly, remove the corruptness, get rid of all the avenues of corruptness that enter in. I care not about all this stuff. You get in with your family. We are going to pray. We are going to fast together. We are going to move. If that's your extended family, you do what you need to do because you need to hear for yourself what God is speaking to you. You have got to position yourself there. And you have got, if men take care of your families in this way, you need to know. Because we are, we are not in seasons past. And this is no joke. And the enemy is sly. And you got to recognize it. Eve did not. Adam did not. And not only did they not, guess what happened afterwards? They blamed God. Adam blamed God. Notice he did not blame God before. Oh, I'm sure he wouldn't look at Eve. I go, oh, who, who's that? No. But then the enemy came in and the blame. And how often have you blamed God for what God isn't giving you that you don't even have a right to just because you claim it? And you blame God no different than Adam acting as a joker all the way back in Genesis. That division, that separation, that fragmentation of God between God and his creation is what we cannot tolerate. Get an order, get the division out, get the fragments out, get an agreement, get with God, abide and never leave. The rest, not relevant. That's the message for today. Let's pray. Father, today I thank you for opening the eyes of every single person who hears these prayers. May their eyes be open, Lord, to see the slyness of how the enemy is moving in their lives. Open their eyes to see the open doorways, to see the corruption, to see. I pray, Father that all who hear this come before you, Lord, and that they diligently seek you, that they come before you, Lord, and they weed out and seek you and chase you above all. I thank you, Father, today, that all who receive will be mightily blessed, that they will be abiding and dwelling in you in the shelter of the shadow of the Most High, that you are the shield and the buckler. And I thank you, Father. I thank you today, Father, for families being restored to you, that men and women come and be restored to you, that this is a new day dawning, that there's responsibility, accountability, a newness, a refreshing, a settling in with you above all. So, Lord, today... I thank you for the revelation to share. I thank you for the revelation, the transformation that comes through it as we go forward. May we walk out our salvation of fear and trembling in agreement, knowing that a house divided cannot stand. So we give you the praise and the glory, Lord, that you are our dwelling place and our God in whom we trust. We praise you, Father, for these things, and we thank you for them all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Pray you are mightily blessed by this today, that you above all get before him. And you know, we do pray every day. We've got daily prayer 
men and women from all over the world join us in prayer and we are just in in such a season of just entering in and staying and abiding and dwelling and getting loose from all the junk and the noise and the stench of the world so i invite you to join us you can learn more about that at julieblairministries.org we still are moving forward with with our training and it, but it's also a retreat center this this place where you can come and and abide and there's there's a lot of things that that uh are are a big change in the fact that I shared I shared previously that my my dearest friend my dearest confidant my dearest brother in the Lord of 22 years uh, died in a in a tragic accident on the job site and he his company was the project lead for building what what we're building and so it is a very it is a very trying time and I'm believing the Lord for for what what will uh, the, the new people that will be coming in because this is a massive loss for the body of Christ when you lose the good good men and women as we are seeing it happen so often. However, the assignment and the mission objective is still the same and and so it will go forth and I believe that God is going to God is going to be bringing it forth in ways that I that, that I am unaware of which praise God for that. And so you can learn more about the um, about our missions and our mandates at julieblairministries.org. And wherever you are getting fed, be a cheerful giver. Still praying about how I get to this funeral, which is is in um, October. And so if if it's of of you to to help, that would be great. The ministry we still have setting that aside that's a thousand dollars that would take to fly and to be there all included that's about what i'm looking at but we still are in need at present time of twenty two hundred dollars for ministry needs so there this is this is where we are and so any any ties offerings donations contributions gifts i do appreciate because this has been um this has been a battle that I will share in detail in, in the due time that is going to absolutely blow your mind to what um, God has done. And and uh, if you don't know Jesus by the end of that, then then I'll continue to pray for you. But but wherever you're getting fed, just please be a cheerful giver and, and don't let fear come in the way. And I want to say this. I'm going to speak this forward those of you I know and this is another thing I've dealt with that I've heard now four people that when they attempt to donate that their bank accounts have been closed that they've had a lot of issues and I rebuke that in Jesus name and I speak that all funds and all ties and offerings that come to this ministry will get here without any hindrances obstacles delays harassment or torment in Jesus name so this is this has been a massive battle but God is good and faithful I stand and stay in that place and I believe and I will be testifying as to what, what God has done. And, and like I said, it's going to just blow your mind because God is just that amazing of a God. And so um, be faithful, stay loving, and stay abiding in Him. Visit us at julieblairministries.org. If you do have a prayer request, please please let me know. I love to, to pray for you and with you, and then, of course, testify with you as well. I love you all dearly. Thank you so much for spending this time with me to be growing in the Lord as we walk out this journey together. God bless you, and I'll be back as soon as He gives me the utterance to, hopefully sooner rather than later. Bye, everybody. God bless you.